The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we welcome all of you to our worship service this morning. We're pleased that you're here today. We invite you to join us for the coffee hour that follows our worship service this morning. It is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Kennedy Ponin and has double duty today. Kennedy? Good morning. On the fifth Sunday in Lent, Jesus makes it clear that he will die. He lets no one pretend that his death can be avoided, like a grain of wheat that must die in order to bear fruit. So, Jesus, so must Jesus die, and so must we die too. Not only when our breathing stops, but when we follow Jesus in loving others, then we bear fruit too. The color for Lent is purple. Purple is the color for the royal king who comes not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for us. Thank you, Kennedy. This next Wednesday is our final midweek Lenten service. We worship at 645. Soup is served at 545. We hope that you will make that a part of your week. Uh, this morning is the last Sunday in this Lenten season that we will use hymn 602 as our Kyrie and hymn of praise. And uh, today, again, as we stand for the reading of the gospel, we'll sing, Return to the Lord Your God. In adult education this morning, our My Calling series continues. Diana Swanson will be sharing with us today about her calling. That will begin about 11 o'clock in the back half of the coffee room. We hope that you will be able to stay for that today. It is Minnesota Food Share Month in the month of March. There is information about that on the yellow sheet this morning. Special gifts for Minnesota Food Share may be shared throughout the month. Uh, you can write a check or put cash in an envelope and uh, give it to an usher or place it in the offering plate. If you write a check, be sure that the memo line uh, reflects that it is for Minnesota Food Share. Uh, our uh, offerings and gifts for this effort uh, will go to the Merriam Park Food Shelf that we partner with for our uh, jet fuel packs and our community market as well as uh, all that they do for others in the community not connected with John Glenn School. Finally, uh, the Board of Youth Ministry summer trip will be July 29th. That's a Sunday. We'll leave after church that Sunday. We'll be back the following Saturday for supper on August 4th. We're headed to Colorado for a uh, relatively high adventure trip with some Bible study included. There is a mandatory trip meeting tonight at 6 here at the church for all of those uh, young people going on the trip and parents and chaperones. Our worship begins with confession and forgiveness. That portion of the service is found at the red tab, page 94. Will the congregation please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. 
As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hymn 602. Today is printed on the front page of this morning's bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Please be seated. first reading for the fifth Sunday in Lent can be found in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. This can be found in the Pew Bible in the Old Testament, page 735. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them from the land to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they had broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Second reading, the second reading for today is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. This can be found in the New Testament, on page 220. A reading from Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. 
and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all those for all those who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. is written in the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning with the 20th verse. If you turn to page 106 in the New Testament portion of the Scripture, we'll read the Gospel together. John chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of our Lord. <coughs> oh, Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In order to be truly human, in order to be truly human, a person must die. I feel like I ought to apologize for even saying that. Because I know it's not what any of us want to hear. The truth is, I don't want to hear it myself. I'm only repeating what we have just read in today's gospel text. To be truly human, a person must die. Like that grain of wheat that falls into the earth. If it does not die, it remains alone. Like a seed locked in some ancient drop of resin. But if that seed dies... It bears much fruit. To be truly human, 
we also must die. It's no wonder that Jesus got in trouble not only with his opponents but even with his so-called friends. The truth is they were not as sophisticated as we are today in trying to preserve life. They didn't have the age that we do to pretend that unlike most people born in the same year we were, we will never begin to fall apart and have all the things happen to us that seem to happen to others. The last funeral that we are at will certainly not be our own. That's the dream that makes cosmetics companies rich, is it not? In fact, it's what drives much of the healthcare industry today. If not for the desire of so many people to be something other than we are, plastic surgeons would be people who fix toys made abroad rather than the faces and the torsos of 40 and 50 year olds who want to look like something else. In Jesus' day, they were not this sophisticated, but they all agreed with us. If to be truly human we must die, then who says any of us want to really be all that human? I don't. I'm more interested in living. And I'm more interested in living on my own terms, in fact, thank you very much, and I'll do whatever I have to to see that I do. And I can understand, and to a certain extent, I will support almost anybody else who feels that same way. And Jesus says that's right where the one he calls the ruler of this world wants you and me fearing for our lives, doing whatever it takes to avoid dying. Call the prince of this world whatever you like, Satan, the devil, Beelzebul. Think about him in personal terms or consign all that New Testament talk about him to ancient history and believe instead that there is no devil, but there is certainly an evil in this world that is greater than the sum of evil in each person's heart. Jesus says that thinking of our lives first Me, mine, and you, yours, this is right where evil flourishes. It's in the conviction I have that the most important sacrifices in my life are the sacrifices that somebody else makes for me. And the more powerful I am, the fewer I have to make of my own. That's why political lobbyists spend all that money And politicians from both camps run to get it like predators in a pack. And it's why pastors like me would rather see more of our budget dollars stay here than send more to the Synod for Benevolence or some other cause. Tax somebody else's house. Borrow now and let our children worry about the national debt. When things are going good, leave me alone. Don't rock my boat. But Jesus won't leave well enough alone. He does not seem to understand how we think or how the game that we play really works. If somebody strikes you on the right cheek, turn to them the other also. If somebody asks you for your coat, give them your gloves and your cap as well. When you share what you have, don't let your right hand know what the left is doing. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. In other words, wheat can't be wheat all by itself. It exists. It was created. Wheat lives to die, and in the dying, to produce more wheat. And human beings are like that. To be truly human, we too must die. In our dying, others will come to be more human themselves. Just as in their dying, we too will be helped. We too will be changed. We too will become more human because of them. There is more to this dying, more to this dying or living than our initial concern to see that a heart pumps and lungs breathe. It is that on which the ruler of this world fixes our attention as if that final death is all that counts. But Jesus says there is more to dying than that. 
that for those who would be more truly human, the last breath can be the easiest, that for most of us it's the other deaths we're called to die that seem to trouble us more, like when we need to learn that we are not the center of things, that what we want is not necessarily right or healthy or even relevant, or that sometimes, sometimes we are a part of the problem that's driving us crazy that we can't worry about changing somebody else and making all the sacrifices all theirs, but that we can work at our own vision, our own attitude, our own sense of understanding and compassion and grace. Without this sort of dying, armies can't move, teams don't win, companies never get their employees or their customers best, nor can friendships ever deepen. All we ever have are acquaintances. Nor do marriages last, or parents and their children ever grow and mature. The grain of wheat cannot be wheat, nor can we be truly human. And that's right where the devil wants us, because it's true what Jesus said. Those who love their life will lose it. It's one thing to say this, it's another to live it, or more likely, to suffer, to follow, to die to this. Jesus knew that, and he didn't run from it. Not that he wasn't tempted to run. Now, he says, my soul is troubled. That confession in itself would be, for some of us, a kind of dying what would so-and-so think if we told them what we really felt or thought? Better not to make that sacrifice, better to cover it up, to not let on, to admit our weaknesses or struggles to no one. But Jesus does not run from being truly human, even if he must die to every preconceived notion of what God is or what a real God ought to be like. Now is my soul troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it's for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. The Bible says that then it thundered. At least that's what the crowd heard. Others said the thunder sounded like the voice of an angel. For Jesus, it was the confirmation of what he knew, that to be truly human, we must die. Just as he had died every time, he forgave those who sinned against him. Just as he died every time he reached out to some lowlife or some beggar and it cost him the support of some well-off and pious true believer. Just as he died every time he told his disciples that what was in it for them was not a cabinet post or a comfortable retirement, but a place in God's kingdom with those who seemed to belong nowhere else. And so he would die again before the court of the Jews and in his trial before Pilate. And as he carried his cross through the same streets where on Palm Sunday he'd have been cheered on Calvary to be nailed to that cross and left there to hang until he bled to death and his lungs could no longer take life in or breathe death out. That is his judgment of this world. What evil promises is no life it has never been, nor will it ever be life. Whether we agree or not, whether the majority will ever be convinced or Congress should ever pass a law, now is the ruler of this world to be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, he said, will draw all people to myself. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And all I can think of is a couple Bible camp songs and one old hymn. Rise, shine, and give God the glory, we sing at camp. Do you see that that's not a song about pious pep rallies and all who like God stand up and cheer, but that if glory is about self-sacrifice, about becoming truly human only as we die, that this is a song that advocates and commits us to our own crosses. Or that old hymn that we're going to sing two Sundays in a row because the words are so very true. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss. 
and pour contempt on all my pride. Think about those words when we sing them and what it does mean to live those words. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my life, my soul, my all. And then there's the song the kids actually get quiet for when we sing it at Camp Emmaus campfires. Father, grant that what we sing with our lips, we may believe in our hearts, and that what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. You'll find it at the light blue tab, page 127. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, if it was anyone else's word but yours, we would not listen at all about a grain of wheat that needs to die in order to bear much fruit. But because it is your word and we are confident in your love for us all, we pray that you will help us to hear and heed what you say, that by the working of your spirit in our lives, we too might see how the sacrifices we make can help those you give us to love, those within our family, those within our church family, and those who are not, but who nonetheless you call us to serve. May our sacrifices bear the good fruit you intend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious Lord, we know that healing and health is your gift and that all those who labor to care for your children do so in accordance with your gracious will. We give you thanks for those in the health care field who provide good care for your children and we pray those who do not have good care will soon. Today we ask especially that you hear our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are in need of your help and healing, those we name aloud and those we name in our own minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our March is Minnesota Food Share Month, O oh Lord, and we pray that it might be a time when people are generous with gifts and donations so that food shelves might be restocked, community markets well attended, and lockers filled with jet fuel packs. And we pray that even if for others March is Minnesota Food Share Month, we pray that for us and others who know your love and the gift of daily bread, that each month might be a month when we are concerned to share with those in need the blessings that you continue to give us. Lord, in your mercy, Lord of life and Lord of all, we pray today for the families of Sho Zhong Zhong and Ed Deeg, Ruby and Roxy Horisberger, Vi Amiot and Susie McPherson, Lester Miller and Ed Zatola, Dorothy Miller and Connie Hecklinger, Arlo Stack and Stephen Yembo. Bless with your presence and your peace all those who grieve and give us hope for our own final day, as well as the confidence that when these loved ones of ours met theirs, that you were there to welcome them into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the prayers printed on page 3 of this morning's bulletin. Let us join in prayer. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
body of Christ given for you. Congregation, please stand. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to have our lives conformed to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>